Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome to Wednesday. It is December 13th. Hope your week is going well. Uh, we uh, finished up day two yesterday of our tax continuing education. Got one more day to go and uh, looking forward for that to be done and uh, and getting a lot of good information from that. So, hey, yesterday we ended up with uh, some green ink. We'll talk about that and more when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. Before we do that, though, Let's not forget that in this world we live in, there are so many things that you and I, we have no control over. But you can take control of your investment portfolio. You need to know how much risk you have in that portfolio. And the biggest thing is you need to know how much risk you should have in that portfolio based on your current circumstances. That's exactly why I developed the core retirement design to help folks design that retirement they always dreamed of. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. Hey, with that, we've got Dave coming up next. Sunshine. Now, you might be walking on money, too, depending on your investments, because there's actually some good news on Wall Street this morning. Let's uh, talk about money, see what's doing on Wall Street this morning with my friend Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services, who is on the phone this morning. Philip, you walking on sunshine? Third record day, almost, with a number three close in history on the Dow yesterday. Now, I'm telling you, buddy, it's just, uh, you would think it was all you know, sunshine and roses now, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm still using that phrase, irrational exuberance. Thank you, Alan Greenspan and Ben. It became one of my favorite terms over the years, and I think we got it again. But, yeah, it was a good day yesterday, up 173 on the Dow, closed at 36,578, which is uh, the third highest close in history on the Dow. We're rapidly approaching that 38, uh, that 368 range, which was the all-time record. Standard & Poor's up 21. The NASDAQ was up by 101 yesterday. And, uh, gosh, even oil fell down below 70. So I got nothing but good news off of the uh, off of the markets as they closed yesterday. And now we come up to this morning, and everybody's sitting on their hands wondering what the Fed's going to do about an interest rate increase, which everybody assumes it's not going to do now. Well, that definitely seems to be the assumption, Dave, is that the interest rates will hold steady. And I got to tell you, more and more folks are are writing about 2024 um, in expectations of, uh, you know, like we talked yesterday, volatile first half, maybe down some, maybe even in correction mode the first uh, first half of the year. But then um, bouncing back up, uh, expectations, interest rates will get cut in May, June, July, somewhere in that area. Um, and then we'll start to, to, to bounce back up now. You know, I'm starting to read more and more uh, commentaries to that uh, that effect. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen, but that seems to be the new bent when we start looking at the forward 2024 numbers. And you know, it that kind of follows the track of what we've been seeing over the earnings reports through this uh, earnings season pretty well completed. Now, we're seeing absolute profits being down, even though the companies are beating the street. And uh, we were saying it yesterday, eventually the, the, er, the price earnings ratio has to catch up with normal convention. Well, either the profits start going up and make the price earnings ratio on the stocks we're buying and selling look like normal multiples, or the stock value's got to go down. One or the other has to happen, and if the uh, if the stock market goes into correction mode and it's indication of slightly more than a soft landing, well, then they're going to end up having to decrease interest rates in order to stimulate the economy because they went too far. Well, uh, that's right, and the question is just when. You know, when is that going to happen? And and that's <laughs> uh, that's the million dollar question, right? Yeah, and the two of us both claiming to uh, not be one of those uh, columnists that says, uh, I predict, and then when it happens, say, I predicted, we're not going to go out on the limb and say when we think it's going to happen, right? No, because we don't really know. <laughs> I mean, we, that, that's the one thing we do know is that we don't know. 
Yeah, besides, we're not selling subscriptions to a tip sheet like these guys are, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we do start the morning out with uh, some interesting information. Uh, the wholesale inflation number. We had the CPI number yesterday, and it showed uh, general good progress. And the producer price index, wholesale inflation, also showing progress. But the overall number year over year uh, is now really nice, 0.9%, under 1% inflation year over year on the producer price index, but they're giving a lot of credit to decreasing uh, petroleum costs on that. The core, which gets food and energy, the most volatile stuff, out of the picture, uh, is improving. It's down from 2.8% to 2.5% annualized, but it's not as big a drop as they expected it to be. Uh, I'm kind of curious how the market's going to react to that. I'm noticing bond yields are taking a dip down this morning, meaning we've got some parked money going on uh, in advance of the market opening up this morning. Yeah, we do. You know, interest rates are going down. We we do see that the um, the indexes are. I mean, they're not popping much, but they're they're up more than what they were 20 minutes ago. All right, so we're willing to accept progress, even if it isn't as even if it isn't as much progress as we'd hoped. Fair reflection. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, the decreases on the interest rates indicate folks are uh, buying up the bonds a little bit in an effort to park money and decide what to do. Maybe some of those uh, parking money actions are waiting until 2 p.m. because that's when the Federal Reserve announced what they're going to do with our interest rates. The other number that comes out this morning... I was of some interest was uh, mortgage application rates. Now, we always talk about housing being so important because its activity bleeds over into half a dozen other industries. Uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association said last week we had another big increase in mortgage applications, up 7.4%. But you drilled down a little deeper, and the bulk of it appears to be a refi applications, right? It does. Interest rates have fallen down, and they're getting – um, really closer to that 7% number. I think they said the range was like 7.07 to 7.17 right now for those folks that have good credit. Um, but we're seeing refinance applications jump 19%. So that was a that was a, a big jump in refis. And then demand for new home mortgages just in the buying process, uh, a much lower number at about 4%, but still uh, up from what it had been. Yeah, that's, that's still a healthy increase, just not quite as exciting as the 7.4%. What's the, what's the rule of thumb? You don't refinance until you got like a full 1% difference on the proposed new mortgage, right? Yeah, that's right. You want at least a 1% change, and you want to make sure you're going to plan on being in that home for the next seven to eight years. Okay, so in all probability, we're not looking at refinances to improve their credit rate when the uh, mortgage rate goes down from 7.8 to 7.05 or something like that. That's probably cash out mortgages again, right? Yeah, probably so, where, where people are you know, wanting to take that cash and buy something or get rid of some credit card debt. Yeah, I was. I, I couldn't. I couldn't remember whether the rule of thumb changed when you get up into these nosebleed level mortgage rates as to whether three quarters of a percent would be enough to refinance or not. But if I were, if I ref, if I did thirty years at seven point eight percent, and I was seeing the possibility of seven point oh five, the rules be darned. I'm going to refinance at this point, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> well, now I don't, I would probably hold on, Dave, because if interest rates are going down, that means they're going to keep going down. And that's a valid so, point, too. So, you know, we, we were still in, in nosebleed section when it comes to interest rates. So, uh, you know, I'd give it another six months and expect that we might be down another half, maybe even 1%. I would imagine, especially given the projections and the probability that to, even in the realistic world, uh, by the end of next year, at the very least, we'll be into uh, easing money time. So swallow that obscene house payment for another six, eight months, and you might be able to save some serious money by waiting until like October of next year. Yeah, just because it costs so much to refi, you know, so you, you want to hold on as long as you can. Absolutely. Not a lot of company reports to talk about. Adobe is going to be reporting later on today. There's almost nobody of note that's passing any earnings report through. So we're going to be kind of trading on the tea leaves on the inflation report. And uh, as I said, the tea leaves over what the Fed's going to do. And all the articles I'm seeing, like you know, as, as you said earlier, the conventional wisdom is we're not going to do anything to the interest rates this meeting. So at two this afternoon, if anything does happen, it's going to be probably an earth-shaking event. 
because there is a change in the rates. But now the conventional wisdom is getting to the point of doing nothing in January as well. And frankly, that kind of surprises me that we're looking that far ahead. Yeah, because, I mean, let's face it, January, well, it, well, it should be. We should have some numbers out by the time the Fed meets um, in terms of sales and uh, and some of those CPI numbers as well. So, um, you know, it's got, who knows what the Christmas season is going to deliver, but I'm thinking retail sales are going to be not what uh, what everybody expected. I know the Black Friday sales, I mean, we showed an increase. Nobody was jumping off of buildings or anything, but it wasn't the kind of increase they were expecting. And the shift into online sales uh, kind of accelerated so far this day. So it, it's kind of interesting, which is why I was kind of giggling at the notion of Macy's uh, proposing a sale that fast, because uh, brick and mortar so far, they, they need to have some good news out of this holiday shopping season. Uh, yeah, I would, I would think that would definitely help their case. Offhand, I think so. So we're sitting on our hands. We're watching things after a pretty doggone good day yesterday. We're actually on all three of the major indexes. We're solidly into what I used to call nosebleed territory again. And we got the highest numbers since the beginning of 22 at this point, which is rather nice to see for a change. 45 minutes before we open. What do the futures look like this morning, Philip? We're getting a nice little bump right now, Dave. The uh, the Dow's up almost two tenths of a percent. The uh, S and P five hundred is up a little over two tenths of a percent, and the Nasdaq one hundred is uh, trying to get up almost a third of a percent right now. So everything's uh, looking pretty good at the open today. On the other side of the coin, we got silver's really flat right now, still just barely above uh, twenty three dollars at twenty three dollars and two cents. Uh, gold keeps flopping below 2,000 to above 2,000. Uh, it's up about a oh three tenths of a percent right now, but still at $1,998 an ounce at the second. And then crude oil um, closed uh, below 69 yesterday, but it's up one percent this morning to $69.35 a barrel right now. That ain't bad. The uh, Asian rim market is kind of looking at us and saying, oh, maybe happy days are here again, except for the mainland Chinese markets and the Hong Kong market. The Asian rim is normally pretty is pretty well up today. There's got to be something going on in terms of reports out of China mainland, though, because I'm looking at the, uh, the Shanghai and the Shenzhen composites, both down by like a percent, percent and a half midway at the end of the day trading day at 6 a.m. this morning. Over in Europe, they're looking at us and saying, oh, okay, let's buy something. The uh, European indexes are up median, about a third of a percent midway through their day. Getting my retirement plans together and making some tax decisions before the end of the year uh, kind of require a fresh pair of eyes to uh, redo my strategy. And some of those strategy changes might best be made before the first of the year. How do I find you to get an appointment and make some of those things happen, Philip? Absolutely, Dave. You know, that's exactly why we developed the core retirement design is to help people Design that retirement they always dreamed of. Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. And then join us this weekend for the Sattler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And back again next time tomorrow morning about the same time with a look at what's going on in the markets and likely to affect your money tomorrow here on Light FM. Thank you, sir. You have a good day, and I'll catch you in a while. All right, buddy. Take care. Be, be well. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. You can hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. I'll be out tomorrow, but back here on Friday. Join us then. Take care. Have a great day. Bye now.